Exodus 33 and verse 12 to 14. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have not given me the key to success with these people. Moses was looking for a key. Moses was looking for a code. There is, every, there is a key to every door. There is no door without a key. His presence is key. That's where I was meeting Revelation. I want to stay there. Exodus chapter 33, in verse 12 to 14. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know. So Moses was asking for a key. What key, what door is in front of you that is impossible? Impossible to open. In my years, few years of working with God and few years of serving God as a, an ordained minister, I've come to know that when it comes to life, there are very few things that can be called impossible at the natural level. And in the spiritual level, there is nothing that can be called impossible. Now, some people, when they talk about impossibility, they are talking about unnecessary things. You don't need to talk about impossibility in the sense of like, this is after 11 in the morning. Say, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray, I want to do impossibility. Let this moment become 11 in the night. Let everywhere be dark. What is that for? It's nonsense. It's nonsensical. We talk about people want to test. That it is, all things are possible. So take me to a lion's den and put me there. The lion will not devour me. By faith, I go in. Do you need it? Is it necessary? Magicians can do that. So that's not the impossibility we are talking about. That is what the scripture talks about. Don't put the Lord your test. I mean, the Lord your God to the test. Unnecessary things that do not make any, do not have any value. Things for sensationalism. Just to be sent. For people to say, oh, whoa. And that, for some people, that is what church is. When they come to say, I want to prove to you that God is mighty. Bring me water. Bring water. Pour it into this, this basin. As you are pouring it now, what you see is blood. And they pour it. They say, I told you. What is that? How is that different from magicians? So that's not what we are talking about. And you have to understand it. Doing impossibility is not going to test. Okay. Uh, in the name of Jesus. I want to. I'm standing on this road. Let, let the trailer that is coming. Come, drive over me. I'm still going to stand here. Go and start. It is, him. It is possible. <laughs> it is possible that that trailer will crush you. <laughs> Fast and pray and die. It is useless. So when we talk about impossibility, that's not it. That one is called spiritual vanity. And God is not a God of vanity. God does not sponsor vanity. God does not do things for sensation. When God did miracles, did the impossible in the sight of Moses was for a purpose. So every impossibility is about purpose. Every impossibility that must be turned into possibility is what? About purpose. In Exodus chapter 3, God told Moses, after Moses argued with God, what of if I go and talk to them and they do not believe in me? They do not accept what I say. And they don't believe in me. They don't believe me. So what am I going to do? 
and after everything, he said, okay, what is it in your hand? He said, it's a staff. He said, staff, throw it down. And he threw it down. What he saw was no longer staff. That was not vanity. It was authentication. Authentication. To authenticate. To prove to you that the one that sends you has power above all things. So that you will go and communicate to people not based on natural power, but based on supernatural power that will bring about impossibility as possibility. And what was the purpose here? For the liberation of the people of Israel from bondage. So when liberation is involved, nothing is impossible. When salvation is involved, nothing is impossible. That's, that's how you understand. So what is the purpose? Okay, you need to pay your bills. Your children need to go to school and everything looks like it is impossible. No way, I turn this way, I turn this way. It is not possible. Is there a purpose? Yes. Another person can say, there is nothing we can do. Let the children drop out of school and stay here. Just stay in this house. It's called fatalism. Fatalistic resig resigning to fate. That is how he was ordained. That's not how he was ordained. It is extremely difficult. At the human level, it is impossible. And just can say, with God, all things are possible. All things necessary. When you understand all things, you have to go to what the scripture says, all things pertaining to life. Because some people look at the Bible literally and they preach to contradict the Bible. Are these things part of what is needed for you to live a life according to the plan of God? For it is the will of God that they, you may prosper in all things. Even as what? Your soul prosper. Does your soul prosper? Do you have God as the prosperity of your soul? Do you have God as the newness of your soul, the new life of your soul? Do you have God as the fruitfulness of, are you fruitful in God? Are you doing the will of God and, fru, and fulfilling God as prosperity of the soul? Because some people, even as your soul prospers, just means, because I speak in tongues. Are you fruitful in God? Do you have results in God? Are you valuable in God? Are you serving his purpose in God? Are you serving God's purpose? Are you adding value to his, the mission of the kingdom? That's the prosperity of the soul. In bringing others to the kingdom, soul winning. In bringing comfort to those around you. Being a light of hope shining. Are you prosperous being the light in righteousness, the, the standard of things? As a believer, the righteousness of your soul is the prosperity of your, I mean the prosperity of your soul is the prosperity of your marriage. That because you are a child of God, the things that break other people's marriage, they don't break you and you show that it is possible in God to live this life and to make marriage in this season that people think marriage is impossible. It's a matter of choice. You choose to and not to. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't, it doesn't hold water again. God is looking for who will prosper so that he will make a statement with me all things are what? Possible. Are you prospering in God? So when the scripture says, it is the will of God that you may prosper in all things, even as you are bearing witness in God, as you are prospering in God, as your soul is fruitful in God. Is, the word prosperity is about fruitfulness. It's about good results. Good testimony. And the scripture says, by their fruits, you shall know them. Is your soul bearing the fruits of God's righteousness. Wherever you find yourself. The other side is you may prosper in all things. And if it, is, it takes impossibility... 
for you to prosper in all things. That impossibility will become possible. This is, this is an insight into the conversation of Moses with God. Every time we open this scripture, there's always a light that shines. And Moses asked God, so you've been telling me, you take these people, you're going to take these people, take these people to, to, to where, uh, bring up these people. But you have not let me know the key. Because bringing up these people is impossibility. It was easy to overcome Pharaoh and the Red Sea. But these people, they're too disorderly, so disorganized, so difficult to lead. As a, as a young minister and standing here with just a handful of people to lead, nothing compared to Moses leading a nation. I understand what it means, how difficult it is to take people from one place of life to another. Some people have sworn, no matter what you do, they cannot grow. They cannot change. Some people have made covenant to go to hell. I used to think I could change anybody and everybody's life. There are some people, if you eat and, and put into their mouth, they will spit out. No matter what you do, they have made decisions, made up their mind to fail. You beg them, it doesn't work. Cajole them, it doesn't work. Motivate them, it doesn't work. Speak to them, it doesn't work. So what are you going to do? God says there is a key. So Moses is asking for a key. I don't know what door you are standing. And by the way, when we talk about door, door is not always like a rectangular looking thing with maybe a handle to turn and, and a, a, a key opening and all of that. You can stand in front of a wall without any partition, but that's where you need to pass through to go to the next level. It is still called a door. It's just that it doesn't look like it is so difficult. When the people of Israel reached the Red Sea, did you see any door there? But where they stood, there was a door. Sir, there is a door. Tell somebody there is a door. In front of the sea, there is a door. In front of the mountain, there is a door. Stand up and speak into the air. Where I stand right now, there is a door. Where I am right now in life, there is a door. In this difficult time, there is a door. In this impossible time, there is a door. Say, there is a door. Just speak it out. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging it. There's a door. Yes, it may look like it is impossible, but there is a door. There's a door that leads to where you are going to, except you are not going to anywhere. If you are going to somewhere, there is a door. I don't know, am I talking to somebody? I say, I'm going to somewhere. And where I stand right now, there is a door. So where you stand right now, there is a door that will take you from where you are to where you should be. You don't need to travel to another place to pass through that door. Right where you are now, there is a door that leads to where you are going to. If where you are standing is Red Sea, ask the people of Israel. Any location at the Red Sea is a door. And when Moses was stranded and he said, God, so what are we going to do here? Moses said, don't worry. And God told Moses, move forward. Don't worry about this. Stretch out, your, your, uh, stretch out that thing in your hand. And he now stood out and told them, today you will see the mighty, the, the glory of God. And, and he had to talk to the people first and, and make the people believe in him. And, and he felt excited and he stretched it out. The, the door cracked open. The door in the Red Sea. The door in the mountain. And when they were thirsty, 
and they were standing in front of a rock. God says there is a door through this rock into a river. I don't know what I'm talking to. Am I talking to somebody? Where you are standing, is it a rock? There is a door. Where you are standing, is it an ocean? Is it a desert? But are you going to somewhere? Is God taking you to somewhere? Are you on a purpose? Are you, are you, are you on a purpose? Are you on a purpose? Have you prospered in your soul? Now, even as you so prospered, there is a door. It may look impossible, but unto God, because there is a purpose, nothing is impossible. The key was what Moses was looking for. Lift up your right hand. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the revelation of the word of God, even now, I receive the key to that door. For I know in this time, in this location, in this helpless situation, there is a door. Say, you door. I see you in the sight of God. And I open you through the, the keys of God. For nothing is impossible. Say, I fulfill purpose. In Jesus' name. You see that? Fear a man who is on a mission. Fear a woman who is walking in purpose. The only power I had in God was that I had a word from God as a 23-year-old, 24-year-old. Go home. Your people need you. You are a missionary to your people. I studied philosophy and theology. Philosophy and theology gave me the, the gift of ability to understand things. That's what studying for 16 semesters in the Catholic seminary did for me. Didn't make me better than anybody. Didn't make me the best in anything. Just gave me ability to understand at the natural, rational level. And the fact of Christ in me, the hope of glory, the anointing that teaches all things, the combination of a sharpened and awakened intellect and a sharpened and awakened spirit by the anointing of God, the combination of this give me, give me access into understanding mysteries and ability to either articulate mysteries or apply mysteries. So I had to study. I had to put myself through the process of test. Every other test, somebody would say, everything, every doubt that anybody will have had or is still having about me, I entertain those doubts. In philosophy, I was trained not to believe, but to question first. And in the Catholic seminary, you are trained in philosophy first. That means you are trained to doubt and the first lady, every time when we are talking about things, she, the first thing she will tell me, you now don't start to think in your mind, like your philosophy mind. I'm talking to my husband now, and I'm, don't begin to apply your mind. Because she knows when she's talking and I'm doubting already, first of all, I'm, I'm questioning her. And, I, and she said, don't, don't, don't go, let's talk like you are my husband. Don't bring that your mind in here. And all of that. I said, okay, continue. I was strange, so I doubted myself. I doubted everything. I suspected everything. I doubted and doubted and fought it and fought it. But in the process, I was putting one thing. When it came to that point, the next, the only thing that I needed to summon, if I take this decision, will it affect my mission? I have to go back to the mission. Go home. Your people need you. You are missionary to you. Okay, so there's a purpose. Okay, let's try. Purpose does not fail. This is when you walk into impossibility. So to fulfill this purpose at a different level needs you hugging the invisible and touching the intangible and hearing the inaudible. That means being in a tango with impossibility. <laughs> Having a dance with the impossibility. And another one remember those days in the pastoral center. And it's coming in these days of the impossible. And I ask a question. Did Peter need to walk on the water? Remember that time? When we were doing 21 days of doing the impossible. Seven years ago. It's so beautiful that you are sitting down and saying, seeing these things play out. 
so beautiful. I was so happy when they elected you as the vice chairman of the Central Governing Council. I didn't expect you to be there. I just said, let me just spare my sister of that. But overwhelmingly, you were elected, and I felt gratified. So you are, you are a witness how this thing started. <laughs> and I asked the question seven years ago, did Peter need to walk upon the water? He didn't need to walk. But he walked upon the water. Was that possibility? No, it was impossibility. So he was just using that to tell me, if you need to walk on the water, what are you waiting for? I didn't need to walk on the water. It's just to show that, find a way. He said, Jesus, if that is you, just to test, is this Jesus? If that is you, call me to come out. And Jesus said, okay, since you want to, come out. He didn't need to. And me, I need to walk on the water to where I'm going to so why shouldn't I walk? So I stepped out of the boat, the several boats of the Catholic priesthood and everything, stepped out upon the water. Nobody told, nobody stepped out and told me, put your first, your left foot first and wait for 30 days and then bring out the other one. Nobody, nobody, I just stepped out like a fool. Seven days, seven years later. <laughs> we are still walking on the water. You see, we are still walking on the water and it looks like it's making sense. So Moses was asking for a key. You have not told me, but you have not let me know. Let me know. You have not, you've said, I, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. And verse 13, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know. He's still asking for a key. Still talking about keys. So on the first, for some people here, they are not going to anywhere. They don't need to go to anywhere. So they have already resigned and made up their, made up their mind. So this one, it doesn't include me. I'm not going to anywhere. This is where I was born. This is where I stay. stay. This is where I will die. Some people you want to marry, they have already chosen to die. And you are preparing to marry dead people. Not planning to grow. And I usually tell young people in my circle, don't marry a man until he tells you his growth plan and his future. Ask him, what does your 10 years look like? Tell me about your 15, your 20 years. Don't look at his height and his wife. And you see a woman, don't look at... Look at that nails. <laughs> I don't know why you people are laughing. People think I have not changed. I have grown. <laughs> Sincerely, you people have been praying God has answered. Don't look at that nails. <laughs> look at that eyelash. <laughs> Ask her, so 10 years from now, where do you see yourself? 20 years from now, what do you hope to help a man? Where do you hope to take a man to? And a woman asks that man, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, where do you hope to take a woman to? If a woman should join you in your vehicle, where are you driving to? Where is the destination in 20 years, in 15 years? Until those questions are answered with precise articulation and fluency in communication. That's a handsome fool. Don't join his boat. That's a beautiful failure. Don't accept the bait. These are things you should know and tell people around you before they are teenagers, before they know the use of sanitary part. Let them know this. Before they know the distinction between diaper and boxer let them know about this that you are going to somewhere because connecting your life to a handsome beautiful going nowhere person is nothing other than wasting God's credit 
the credit of being alive for 80 years, for 70 years, for 80, for 90, for 100. How do you waste that credit? If you are going to somewhere, you are a man that will look at death and tell death, it is not time. Get out of my sight. I'm going to somewhere. That you meet failure. And you tell failure, do you even know where we are going to? Where I'm going to, I... I you will walk for me. Join me. Just come and join me. There's a man called Jehu. Jehu was on assignment. Everybody that came, he told them, join me. And they joined him because he was sent on a mission to destroy. So if your name is Jehu and something comes to dare you and you know where you're going to, you tell somebody, do you know where I'm going to? Come and join me. Let's do it together. So failure can help you. Mistakes can help you. If you know where you are going to with precision, Fools will help you. Wise people will help you. Enemies will help you. Friends will help you. Nothing is impossible for somebody who is on a mission for God. Sir, if you don't have any appetite, any hunger to show up here in these days of doing the impossible, I don't have a problem with you because you are going nowhere. And I pray nobody should meet you in life. Nobody should give you anything in life until you know where you are going to. Because if you are given gold and you don't know what to do with gold and where you are going to with gold, you will make gold look like dust. And the scriptures say, don't give pearls to pigs. So when I say, let God not give you anything until you know where you are going to, I'm not praying black prayer. I'm praying the scripture. Do you need a wife if you don't have a purpose? Do you need a husband if you don't have a life? Not a pastor of those who tell you, receive it, receive it. Receive what you don't know. Receive life first. Boy in. Boy in. Boy in. The first lady understands that. Look at the conversation of God. And he said, my presence is all you need. My presence will go with you. So the presence of God is the key presence of God is the key. That's true. The presence of God has something to tell you that no prophet will tell you. The presence of God has something to show you that no teacher will teach you. The presence of God has a prescription that no pharmacist have understanding of. The presence of God have a diagnosis that no physician will understand. The presence of God gives you information that Google has no idea of. The presence of God gives you scripts that AI, the best of it, cannot create, generate. The presence of God is heaven to me. <laughs> Men who are going to somewhere, they hunger for the presence. They look for the key. Those who are not going to anywhere, you say, yeah. When you see people, everything, wake up, eat, eat, eat. eat. They are not going to anywhere. Those who are going to anywhere, that sometimes they look at food. It doesn't make sense. They look at what others are dying for, pleasure of sex offered to them. They say, keep it there. Sometimes money is offered to them. They say, drop it there. They are going to somewhere. That's what purpose does to somebody. And God didn't say, I will give you food. God didn't say, I will send you an army. Say, my presence will go. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your spiritual eyes will be open. Lift up your two hands. I trust God that as I speak, just as I speak will come to pass. That your spiritual eyes are opened. And you can see the vision of God's presence. I pray that your mind will be made alert and watchful and receptive to the invading presence of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your two hands and say, in these days of doing the impossible, I'm speaking that God will give you a formula to solve a mathematical issue. Amen. 
Whatever is the mathematical problem in your marriage, mathematical problem in your business, mathematical problem in your finance, mathematical problem, whatever is the mathematical problem that has defied every kind of solution, every mathematician and all the solutions they have proposed do not seem to fit into this particular problem. The presence of God will give you formula and the presence of God will give you solution accurately and speedily in the name of Jesus. That's how a former Reverend Father is still a father. Call me Father Patrick, you are not wrong. I worked for 13 plus years. If I worked as a lawyer in a firm, after that you still call me barrister. You call me Father. It's my gratitude. And I'm now a father of children and I father some people here. Father some people here. Praise God. Praise God. This is, this is the key by which a reverend father became mad. And seven years later, people discover he's not mad. Be serious. Seven years ago, everybody who saw me wanted to give me advice. Everybody comes to tell you what to do and they don't even know how to do things in their family. And I just pretended like I didn't know anything. Anybody who came to tell me anything, I will appreciate. At least for a season. After some time, people discover I was not as foolish as I pretended to be. I was consulting the presence. While people at, were talking nonsense about me, I was praying. While people were crying over me that I would fail, I was in his presence. I was in his presence. Sir. Stay in his presence when your wife does not believe in you. Stay in his presence when your husband does not believe in you. Please stay in his presence when your children do not, do not believe you can take them to somewhere. Just go back to his presence. Stay in his presence when your, your profession, where you are strong, where you walk effortlessly and make results effortlessly, where it seems like you no longer know your skills and you have forgotten your craft. Go back to his presence. To move from this place to that place, the presence is a key. The presence is so heavy. In the coming days, by the grace of God, there will be an unfolding of the mysteries of his presence. Let's, let me quickly give you two, three points today. You already know the, pre, the pre, presence in Hebrew is pane. It is from pane. You have pene here. Pene here. Pane means countenance. So God was telling Moses, my countenance will go with you. Pane means condition. And this one is, is sweet. They sweet me. It's sweeting me. I like this condition one. I like the condition thing. He said, my condition will go with you. The desert will not be your condition. I don't know whether you have been in desert areas. I've traveled to the northern part of Nigeria. I've, I've stayed there for some time. I've had to do ministry there. I've traveled to Soko something, sometimes in 2007 to go do ministry in Sokoto. And it was such a harsh, the harshest conditions I've ever met. And it was around between January, February, March. It was terrible. I had to preach there. I've stayed, spent some time in Kano and Kaduna around that area. So when it, when it is rainy, when it's rainy season, it's extremely cold. When it is dry season, extremely hot during the day, extremely cold in the night. Now, transpose that to those who live in the Sahel. Transpose that to, into people who live between Libya and Chad. And, and just, trans, just multiply that into people who live in the Himalayas, Himalayas and in the high places and all of that. Conditions kill people. God says here, yeah, you, are, you are in a harsh place. Economic, economic climate is so harsh. My covering will go with you. My direction will go with you. With my attention, my respect, my regard, my turning around towards you will go with you. I want to talk to you one or two ways we shall be looking at this. How does the presence of God manifest? When God says, my presence will go with you. How will you and I 
get to in the, get to have in in in, in indication in the indication of his presence with us how do you know the presence of god is with you how do how do you figure that out how does the presence of god manifest what is it in the scripture that will help you know so that you will know oh the presence of god is going with me exodus chapter 29 verse 45 to 46 exodus chapter 29 verse 45 to 46 I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. So the presence of God is the result of God dwelling with people. So you ask yourself a personal question as a family. Is God dwelling with you? Some people, the only time they call the name of God is in church. And they don't call the name of God in church. They go to churches to collect water and collect oil. They don't have God. They move from one useless shop. Spiritism and witchcraft shop. Collect charcoal. Collect dust. Go to their village to collect sand. Mix with oil and water. And that's what they have in their home. So waters from ancient rivers of occult that is now transmuted into what is called church. It dwells with them, but God does not dwell with them. Many of you say that as couples, as family, don't have the presence of God in your family. No agreement to talk about God. No agreement, no study of the word. No devotion. No speaking, no singing of God. No practice of anything of worship. No word. So some of you, once you live here, you see some people, they say, I am their father in the Lord, their pastor. The messages we preach, they don't play in your home. They don't play in your office. What do you play at home? What do you wake up to? What do you listen to? The presence of God is the dwelling. God does not dwell physically. God dwells through moods. His word. His spirit. And his spirit and his word is what happens in our devotion, in our consecration. Consecrated time in a family. Now, when that time comes, father, mother, children, they know it's the time of God. A practice of that, that is built upon a godly life, is God dwelling. Just can say, where two or three gather in my name, what will happen? I will dwell. So you see, families. Do not have any practice of God's presence. And so they don't have keys. They room about looking for water, looking for oil, looking for charcoal. These are people when they, when they say, the man of God usually sits here. They will come in the night. They come and lie down there. It's Yesu Kuro Wabasiaka Naro. It is idol, idol worshippers. Now me tell them more. Get come and poke a part. So get your mumbo pastor. Give me your handkerchief. So the fight of handkerchief of a pastor, idol worshippers. Praise God. And me a woofed. He covers in other other. I told you I have two rods. Come and hear me. You boy boot. Come and hear me. You boy lion. Praise God. As a Catholic priest, I was ordained the first few days of my ordination. Where my father had, my father died before I was ordained. Where he had as his bedroom, somebody used to stay there and the person had to be taken out of that place. So I converted the bedroom of my father into a chapel. 
And in that chapel, in a Catholic tradition, the blessed sacrament exposed perpetually. Or celebrate Mass there in the morning, in the night, as a first place of celebrating the mystery. The same, what the Catholic Church will come as, every ritual boils down to one thing, breaking the bread. And Jesus Christ said, do this in memory of me. Pay attention to this testimony so that you know the difference between God dwelling with you and you taking something from, the, from whatever you suspect, whether it's through God or not. I have shared this testimony before. So, every morning, I wake up and I'll just stand there before God. It was such an exciting experience. There is a man, we used to be neighbors, we shared the same, the same space. His father related to my mother, old, older by age, the age of my eldest sister, the second in the family. We used to call her Ampangetun. So for those who come from my community, you see, they may know Ampangetun. He was in Ubeneka, a fisherman, with his outboard engine. And usually my people come home during Christmas with their nets, fishing nets, and outboard engine. And in the tradition in my village, Ukokban, in those days, they will bring those things on the 31st of December or so, or Christmas Day, 26th December or so. The Catholic priests who come to celebrate Mass will bless them. And these people, they don't go to church, but they believe in that blessing more than they believe in anything. So this man, because he had access to me, he had a claim over me. He didn't ask for my permission. He just brought his outboard engine and his servant brought the, the fishing net. They just told my brother, please open the door where your brother is celebrating mass. Let's keep this thing. And my brother collaborated with them. I didn't know about it. Before I would know it, an upboard engine was by my, the place I would, ah, and the net, everything. They invaded my space. For about two weeks, three weeks or so, those things were there. Until the day he was leaving from there, was living from there to fishing port, gave me oil. He kept a bottle of oil there, and I would just be speaking, blessing the oil, blessing the net and the outboard engine, and blessing the oil. He came and took from there. I was not there when he came and took them. I had traveled, took from there. In three months, the man said he made the wealth that about twenty years of his struggling could not make. He had to look for me in 1995. This, I was already 1993, December. This happened between that December into January. And by about July, August, I was in St. Max Oro, Oron Town. He looked for me and met me there. He told me, now I have a boat, transportation from Ubarikan to Oron, Oron Town within these few months. And I've started transportation business, boat, engine, business. He said, everybody in the environment will come to ask him, so okay, get fuck. People will come, okay, fuck, whatever, how much, how, no matter the amount of money. In six months, he made, he made money. He said, every day he will go to the sea. When others come back empty, he comes loaded. It did not last up to one year. Now, you know, others, the satanic space is that when you rise, people feel if they bring you down, they will shine. And he does not pray. He took something from the presence where God was honored and exalted, where God dwelled. But he himself did not have the presence of God. So, Everything has expiring dates, including what is taken from the presence of God. I'm sharing with you a life thing, a life story. In six months, he had made well, then attack started. It was not up to two years, he sold everything. Everything crumbled. By the time he met me, he brought fish. Brought fish and told me, Aye, came me, my brother. God has used you to bless me. I have not seen this in all the years of my toil. In six months, I've seen what I've never seen. Every day brought me money 
told me, brought oil again for me to bless. It was not in the oil. It was in the presence. But because he was not dwelling in the presence, he was coming to pass, not coming to stay. That was a sign for him. That man, I am with him. So certain blessings we look for, we are looking for a sign that God is with somebody. The reason it does not last is because it was to point you to the God who is with that person. I don't know, am I communicating? And since you don't pay attention to find out the God that is with you and you hold on to the things that come from the person that God is with, after some time, the favor dissipates and you move from one place. And they woke up at Abaya Yogi. So you this is how you people room into the hands of lion and magicians, witch doctors everywhere, transmuted into church planters. Because there are people roaming around. That's why when people come into this church, they get so disappointed that I'm not interested in finding talking about their problems. People think it is sensational when I mm, come out here, come out here, come out here. Mm, I see, mm, I see, mm, everybody will look like this. Even those who have been sleeping from the beginning to the end, they will no longer sleep. The first lady talked to me how they grow up in apostolic. During apostolic, during prayer, everybody, they are talking, they are chatting outside. But in my cup, ah, A and B, everywhere is quiet. Your war. If you were eating, you stop. If you were dancing, you, saw, you just come. Pin drop, you will hear. Anything slight noise, you will hear because everywhere is quiet. The most talkative person on earth says nothing. He hear me. Quiet. After that, if you are preaching, you are wasting your time. So that's also how people they can be talking for us. Because we could be cobasi. It can be boy or come boy chain or woke boom boom woke on the boot. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So the presence of God is God dwelling. Exodus chapter 29 and verse 45 to 46. I will dwell among the children of Israel. God is interested in dwelling. It's called Emmanuel. For God shall dwell. God wants to dwell in your business premises. God wants to dwell in your bedroom. God wants to dwell in your marriage. God wants to dwell in your office. God wants to dwell. Do you know for those who serve Satan, before you arrive in the office, they arrive first and do what Satan instructs them to do. And believers, they just come. Or not believers, those who go to church. And they also bring oil from somewhere. God does not dwell with oil. He didn't say, I will dwell with oil. God didn't say, I will dwell with water. God didn't say, I will dwell with salt. God didn't say, I will dwell. He said, I will dwell with you. So the presence of God takes place when people allow God a space in their life. When the people allow a God a time in their time. God dwells in the time that you dedicate to him. God dwells in the space that you dedicate to him. So we are entering like on a Sunday like this. We are entering a season of Christianity of convenience. So on Sunday morning, I have been too busy. My dear, let's just do online. 
Let me tell you something about this online thing. There is an op online as an option of distance that where I am, it is practically impossible for me to be there physically. That's it. But if online be becomes convenience, is idolatry. It is the downgrading of God as number one to after me. After my morning, Sunday morning showers and rest on my Bobby and my hobby. After, so it means God, he said, God does not dwell a second. He says, I am Alpha and then I am Omega. It is only when I am first that after you have moved and something wants to follow you, it will see me as Omega because I'm first. If I am not first, I will not be last. That means something will follow you. Arrow will follow you. There are arrows sent against people in different manner. Could be a sickness, could be affliction, whatever. If God is your first. In fact, grace family, say we place him first. So it's an eternal covenant of security. Place him first in my time. Place him first in my finance. Place him first in my morality. Place him first in my marriage. He comes above me. He comes above my pleasure. He comes above my convenience. He comes above my provision. He comes above my security. He comes above my time. That is when whatever follows me, he meets him as last. Means you don't meet me. What comes in front of me meets him. And he said, let me wait. Let me come behind. He will meet him. I am the first. I am the last. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I dwell with my people. So when he told Moses, my presence will go with you, he's telling us today, my countenance, my condition. So how will his condition be with us? He seeks to be part of your life, dwelling. The dwelling is a stable place of relationship. Marriage takes place in that dwelling. He didn't say, I will visit you. Oh, but I still visit you. God has visited me. God has visited me. God, no, God is not a visitor. God dwells. In the name of Jesus, rise to your feet. <laughs> say, in the name of Jesus Christ, my God is not my visitor. My God dwells. My marriage is a home for you to dwell. My relationship is a home for you to dwell. My children, my space, my office, my time. You dwell in my time. My time has room for you. My time has room. For, my job has room for you. My activities have room for you. Nothing can take your place in my life. Nothing. Lord, dwell with me. Lift up your two hands. Lord, I accept you to do a woman. I accept you to do a woman. Lord, 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 I accept you to do a woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. I don't know why God is talking to me about politics. The last election that just passed, God had told me to be careful. That there will be a lot of mistakes and corruption in the church in the last election. And I told very few people around me, one of the things God opened my eyes to see, that in the political circle, God is used in the same way that they use Ebok from Ika. Employing men of God for prayer, setting up places for people to pray, not because God is honored, but as a use, as an instrument. So the last election became a competition of God versus God. A 
corruption of holy space. And it's so easy to appeal to pastors who want relevance and who are hungry, who want food to eat. So everywhere people are praying. And everybody, prophets are prophesying. Ebo kero kefu. Afo, 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 afo. Everybody was believing in his own prophet. So at the end of it, it becomes like mockery. Comes like mockery. Yabado. Yabado. If you are called by God, if you are not careful, you lose the call. Because of the pressure of men who intend to use God as oil. God dwells. When God dwells with you, there are things you are forbidden from doing. For God to dwell in your family, dwell in your business, that means God is what governs your business. It's what provides the rule of engagement. Why many families of those who go to church, they don't have the presence of God in their homes. The word of God does not provide the rule of engagement in their marriage, in their parenting. It's about church where we come to do activity and we play life with different rules at home, in offices, in businesses. And God does not dwell with you. So you cannot find a key in God. That's why many people call the name of God on Sunday and they belong to Satan in different cults. So the issue of I will dwell among, I will dwell among the children of Israel, will be, I will be their God. It means I am involved. It means the way you relate with orphans, I am involved. That's how God now begins to talk about you have to be compassionate with the orphans. You cannot cheat, you cannot, you cannot take advantage of widows and orphans. You cannot do this, you cannot. This is how the law, the commandment came because I am dwelling among you so my word must be the, the rule for you to obey. This is the secret. So if the word of God does not govern the way you go about things, how you relate with things, no matter who is praying, Say pastors come to pray. Pastors, but we see the account. Pastors they come to pray. Pastors they come to pray. Pastors come to prophets. They come to prophesy. I mean, fellowship in the night and in the day is God's word. The rule of engagement. God is not an idol. God is not oil. God is government. God is rulership. When he dwells among you, he leads you. When he dwells among you, he governs you. He guides you. He directs you. So why, if you don't see your presence, his presence in your life, it's because his word is not governing your life. If you don't see his presence in your business, his word is not governing. If you don't see his presence in your household or by your children, his word is not governing. God's presence. Let's go to the next one. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9 to 12. I'm almost done. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9 to 12. God's presence is, he's looking favorably on one, on you, on your project, on your business. Because he dwells with you, he looks favorably. God can look angrily at you. And these days of heresy from hell, you say God cannot be angry. That the God of Old Testament is Satan. That God is too holy to be angry. Or make it, make it demons are speaking from people. Because they can no longer lie to people to bring them money. And now they are lying to people to live the truth. Because they want to be relevant until their souls die in hell. When God looks favorably on you, it's because you please him. Because you honor him. He spoke through Samuel, those who honor me, I will honor them. When you honor him, he, he dwells with you and he looks favorably. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 9 to 12. For I will look on you favorably. And make you fruitful. Multiply you. And confirm my covenant with you. 
That's verse 9. Look favorably. Favorably. God's presence is walking among his people. Walking. Walking. Do you know walking means taking, you know, step. You are going on a business journey. Dwelling with is locational. Walking with is, <laughs> is translocational. You move from America to Europe, nothing has changed because he's walking with you. He says, when you go through the waters, you are walking through the water, what will happen? I will be with you. It means I'm walking with you. Through the fire. So you go through affliction. You are in a foreign land. You are in a place, a business project, far away from church, from where you pray. But his presence walks with you. Walks among you. You relocate from Nigeria to anywhere. He walks with you. You go through unfamiliar spaces. He will walk with you. Leviticus 26, 11 and 12. I will set my tabernacle among you. And my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you. I will walk among you means. There will never be a time something happens. And I'm behind and you are in front. Or I'm in front and you are behind. And I've left you behind. I will walk among you. Trouble will see me among you. You walk in through the valley of the shadow of death. The valley of the shadow of death will not swallow you. Why? I will walk among you. You walk through the fire. The fire shall not burn you. Keep going. I am walking with you. If you are going through a scary situation, diagnosis that will take your heart away, diagnosis that will beat you to death, what will happen? This is a situation. I am walking with you through this adversity. I am walking with you through this lack. I am walking with you through these challenges. I am walking with you through these dark times. I am walking with you. You are not alone. I am with you. I will not forsake you. That is the presence of God. That is the key to doing the impossible. Because I walk with you. If you walk to the mountain and you need to pass through that mountain, this way is a wall. This other way is a wall. In front of you, a, a mountain. You cannot even climb because it's another wall. And God says, move forward. As you move forward, the, the wall or the mountain has two options. Either it keeps retreating, retreating, going backward until that season is over, or if the, if, the, if the mountain doesn't like that option, then the mountain begins to split. <laughs> it begins to split. It begins to split. And you walk through. A mountain is this way. A mountain is this way. <laughs> and you are going this way. Why? God is walking with you. And Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. God walking with us. Rise to your feet. Mm. Just lift up your two hands. Say, Jesus, you are the face of God. You are the condition of God. You are the countenance of God. Jesus are the countenance of God. You are the face of God. You are the countenance of God. You are the face of God. You are the countenance of God. You are the face of God. Jesus, just call that name. So I don't want you to be a visitor in my life. Do hell with me. Your eyes are too pure to see iniquity. So I repent. Take these sins away. Take this sin away from me. Can you have conversation in repentance? Take this lost. 
take this pride take this arrogance take this filth please take this away from me take this from me take this from me. just just go ahead hands raise as if we are receiving something just talk to him intimately say Lord Jesus I don't want to worship you from afar I don't want to just visit you in church I want to dwell in you and I want you to dwell in me come home and make my heart your home come on my heart your Come and make everything and I will know search through and through till my heart becomes a home for you a home for So just speak under your breath Lord Jesus come let's not make this general make it personal Lord please I'm sorry that I've been relating with you from afar say I'm no longer the Lord of my time I'm no longer the Lord of my finances I'm no longer the Lord of my life you will not dwell with me as a houseboy you will not dwell with me as a house girl you will not dwell with me as a dog a pet dog you will not dwell with me to take instruction from me. You dwell with me. You dwell among me and walk among me so that I can take instruction from you, so that I can seek you. I can spend time with you. Oh my goodness, Lord, take my time. Take my treasures. Take my values. Take my marriage. Take my children. Lord, take my sexual pleasure. Just take me all. Take everything that does not please you. Take my time and let my time please you. Take my body and let my body please you. Take my heart. Who is saying this? Just speak those words. You know, you know what this means. You know what this means. Just take time. Let's make this consecration. Let's just make this consecration. Ah. Kalabushet. La brena mosso to pre capala bossete. Malabonde telebra secato. Leanda soto male brachnana. Ramondo to pre le bossecate. Lord, Lord, say I will no longer trust in oil, I trust in you. I will no longer trust in water, I trust in you. I spend time with you because I want you. I give you my time, my costly time. I give you, give you my value. I serve you with my time, with my resources, with my talent. I serve you with everything. Because you dwell. You are my security. You are my safety. Halabosheta. I said, ask, can you come over here? Halabosheta. Let's just have a moment with him. Just hum it in under your breath. Just hum it like intercourse. Just, just hum it like intimacy. Let's see under Lord, we need your presence. 
Lord, dwell amongst us in GFCC. Lord, walk with us. Let, don't, don't let our technology, don't let our ingenuity, no, don't let our intellect lead us. Don't let our culture and tradition, don't let our needs lead us. Oh, my so pray, let me see and that. Don't let our money lead us. Don't let our degrees, our academic qualifications lead us. Wherever you are, just, just raise your hand and say, Lord, lead me. Lead my marriage, Lord. Lead my relationship, Lord. Let your word be the rules of engagement. So lead my business, Lord. You are my healer, Lord. You are my healer. You are my lifter, Lord. Lord, you are my all. You will not dwell among me and then plagues will destroy me. You will not dwell with me and robbers will rob me. You will not dwell with me. And kidnappers, kidnappers will kidnap me, Lord. Who kidnaps you? Who, who robs you? Lord, you will not dwell amongst us and we see shame. You will not dwell amongst us and diseases will eat us. You will not dwell. Holy, holy, holy. Our God is on the throne. So firm is his foundation. No power can overthrow. For he shall reign forever and You reign in my health, son. It's not a man of God that I'm looking for. It's not a church I'm looking for. Lord, I'm looking for you. Who can be shall The Lord is. It's not anything I'm looking for. It's you, Lord, to reign in my life. To dwell, to war with me, to talk with me. Speak in your own words. Come and reign in my heart. Come and reign in my soul. 
Come and reign in my health. Come and reign in my family. Reign in your mercy. Reign in your kindness. Reign in your goodness. Come and he shall reign in your life. Hey. He shall reign forever. Speak over your family. Speak over your business. Speak over your life in this season of doing the impossible. As he reigns, 
His presence is the key to the door of all possibility. your hands, sing over your children, sing over your household, sing over your hands. Make it a celebration. Celebration, he shall reign, he shall reign, he reign. Where he reigns, there is no cancer. Where he reigns, there is no tumor. Where he reigns, there is no robbery. Reign over my house, reign over GFCC, reign over GFCC, reign over Goshen. Reign over our homes, our marriages, our children. Reign over our sexuality. Reign over our, reign over our intimacy. Reign over our vision. for something. He dwells amongst us in Goshen. He dwells amongst us in GFCC. The God of my call. Yahweh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. My Redeemer. The one who has fed me in all my journey. The angel of my guidance. He is the messenger and the message and the one who sends the message. Son is the lion and the lamb, the priest, the victim, and the altar. Lay your hand where he's healing you. Enjoy his presence. And he shall Instructions will come to you. Direction will come to you. And we shall
You are beautiful. Your face is all lost. healing abound let your hand move swiftly and mightily your presence is the healing that the doctor knows nothing about your presence is the deliverance that the prophet cannot talk about your presence is the key to the invisible, the key to the impossible. Prove to somebody that we are in your presence, that you dwell amongst us, that we are two or three are gathered in your name, that you are there. Touch a marriage, I was at the brink of collapse. Touch a household. <laughs> Touch your heart that is filled with fear. Just lay in your back, lay hands on your body. Chains in your feet, chains in your genitals. Somebody is being released. Somebody is being released. Potency is restored. Somebody's hands are free. So somebody's mind is restored. Somebody's memory is boosted. Somebody's spine is healed. The massaging hand of God. For the Lord our God is mine. Oh yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. <laughs> the Lord our is wonderful for the Lord our God is mine. Lord let your let your presence dwell with us feel this house every day every time let your presence be palpable and tangible let the prayers of your children be answered let doors be open for nations to come. Let your, let your presence sweep across Antarctica, Oceania, from New Zealand to Australia to, to Tonga and all the islands. Let your, the light of your face, your condition sweep across the Americas, across the Amazon, the indigenous people, the unrich people. From Canada, United States, Mexico, the whole of North, in Guatemala, in, in other nations of the central sub-region of America, in Chile, in Venezuela, in Argentina, in Brazil, and the whole of Southern America. Let your face, the light of your face, sweep across Southeast Asia, Central Asia, 
India, Pakistan, China. Let your, your face sweep across Russia and the whole of the Balkans and the Caucasus and the Scandinavians and the Mediterranean of Europe. Let the light of your face sweep across the Arabian Peninsula, the Middle East from Iraq, Iran. The whole of Lebanon, the nation of Israel, let the light of the face sweep across the north of Africa, the southern, the eastern, the central, the western, in the northeast, northwest, north central of Nigeria, in the southwest, southeast, and south south, from the door, there's a bias, a river, crossing a quiet homestead. Then the light of the face sweep across from Ini to Ikorokbere. Ogoro <laughs> in all ancestors in all communities in all families in all marriages in all businesses for the Lord in every heart in every soul in every body in every pregnant woman in every spectral couple all can take your seats. God bless you. God bless you. Tell your neighbor, I'm sure you've been blessed. Tell your neighbor, I am very sure you've been blessed. Right. Romans chapter 8 verse 32 as we take our offerings. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things, all things. Somebody say all things. The scripture has made it clear that if God did not spare his son, then we should not spare our resources. That which you have come to honor the Lord today, package it as we give it. In questions of value, 
questions of quality don't spare anything give it all to God in honor if you need an envelope our ministers are close by to serve you with a specific envelope that you you need and um, for online transfer the account details are displayed on the multimedia screen for tithes and our tithes and offering this is that which is used to maintain God's house. The Bible says, it says, bring you all the tithes and offering into my house that they might be meat in my house. In essence, that they might be maintenance of their house. That's tithes and offering. Partnership, your partnership and your first fruit. This is your participation in keeping God's word on air. As our father stands preaching on air, radio, television, it's your resources that is keeping it on air. You do that cheerfully and intentionally. And also, your prophet's offering. You don't, this one is not negotiable. You do it intentionally. Paul the apostle said in, in, in Romans chapter from verse 17, He's speaking, he said, not that I seek your gift, but I seek fruits that will abound to your account. So he does not really need, but it is an opportunity that God has given to us as we sow into the life of his servant. Our account is increased. If you're done packaging your offering, please rise to your feet. God bless you. And those who are doing online, who are, who are, who are on the Christ radio, the account details are displayed on the screen of the app. Raise your offering up as we pray together. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the privilege of giving me to give. And as I lay down the seed, I walk into your economy. I will never experience poverty. I give out luck. I give out sicknesses and disease. Everything that is not in consonance with your will and your purpose for my life. As I lay down this gift, I lay it down. I receive the blessings. I receive favor. I receive increase. All things are working together for my good. Say, in Jesus' name we pray. Say, amen. And so, Father, we thank you for the privilege you've given us to give. As we lay down this, we ask that these seeds of offerings, tithes, partnership, and the prophet's offering, they are consecrated. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.